Hey, what's up guys? My name is Michael Westbrook. Thanks for checking out this video. If you haven't already, do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button. If you've seen some of my previous videos, then you know that I work out of a small home studio and I do a lot of recording using an analog digital hybrid setup. This setup involves the tube amps that I know and love, but then also gives me a lot of flexibility to be able to record silently and also change out um, cab IRs and speaker IRs after the fact. Today I want to run you through the setup and show you some of the perks of the analog digital hybrid setup. All right, let's get into it. All right, so I want to show you guys how this is set up for me. So say I plug into this amp. This is a matchless HC30. Um, it's a 30 watt amp roughly based on an AC30. Now, this amp is amazing, but it's incredibly loud when I run it through a speaker cabinet. If I were to crank this amp up in my house, it would shake the entire house. Um, I know because I've done it before. I run out of the speaker out of this, and rather running into a speaker cabinet, I run into this thing right here. This is the two notes captor. Now, the captor is what we call a load box. It basically simulates the load of a speaker on the amplifier. If we were to play through a guitar amp without a speaker connected at all or a load box connected, it would damage the amplifier. So what this does is it gives the correct amount of resistance to the amp so that the amp is happy and then allows that amp signal to go straight into Pro Tools. Basically, I run an XLR out of this box um, into my audio interface, which is recorded directly into Pro Tools. So I'll run that down again. I plug into the guitar amp. From the speaker out of the guitar amp, I run into the two notes captor. We run in on this side into this red jack right here. I run out of the two notes captor with an XLR into my audio interface. So here's where things get interesting. The tone that's recorded inside Pro Tools of just the guitar amp direct doesn't sound good. It's just the amp running straight in. Guitar speakers contribute a lot to the overall sound of a guitar amp. In fact, if you were to plug a CD player up to a guitar cabinet um, and play it through there, it wouldn't sound good. But guitar amps paired with guitar amp speakers sound great, right? So it's a very large contributing factor to your overall sound. So now we will jump into Pro Tools and I'll show you guys how I use speaker IRs um, and some of the, the perks around using that inside Pro Tools and how I have that all set up. All right, so I've got Pro Tools pulled up. This song that we're gonna take a look at is from my last video where I talked about building a Tweed Deluxe copy. I've got three guitars pulled up. I've hidden other stuff um, just so we can focus on these three guitars. You'll hear other stuff, but um, we're just gonna focus on these. So right now we've got a Tele going into the Tweed Deluxe, a Les Paul going into the Tweed Deluxe, and then a uh, silver tone guitar that I use for the solo. Now, I know we've been talking about the matchless this whole time. This same principle applies to any amp. The Tweed Deluxe, I run into the two notes captor, the matchless, my Fender Deluxe Reverb. All of these I run the same exact way from the speaker out into the two notes captor, into the Focusrite interface, recording it straight into Pro Tools. What I wanna show you guys is how that sounds just direct with no speaker or cab IR on it. We'll take a listen to the telly part here. So pretty bad, right? Um, it just sounds real ratty, real gnarly. So now I'm going to turn on the speaker IRs. Here you can see I'm using the Two Notes Torpedo Wall of Sound plugin. This is actually a free plugin that they offer, um, and it comes with a few IRs, but you can also use other IRs in it. Um, I'm on this, I'm using all of my own IRs that I've made. If you want more info about those, there's a link in the description for them. So here on this tele, you can see I have this PJ EQ blend, and then on this side, I have the MWW blend two. Um, these are a couple of my favorites, a um, couple of my go-tos, the PJ is a Eminence Private Jack and the blend is a few different speakers and mics blended together. Here's what that sounds like now with the speaker IRs onto the direct amp sound. Okay. 
Much better, huh? Okay, so now we're gonna go to the Les Paul. I'll solo it out and we'll hear what it sounds like. All right. So here you can see on one side I have a green back, the GB, and then on this side I have a hemp speaker, hemp cone speaker, which is the um, Cannabis Rex from Eminence. Now, one thing that running my setup this way allows me to do is that I can change the speakers and the cabinets after the fact. So when I'm actually working on these tracks, I'm not spending the time to find just the right setting, just the right IR, um, you know, I kind of do it all after the fact. So usually what I do is I pull up some of my go-tos or ones that I think will work well and then just hit record. You know, and obviously if something sounds just way off, then I might change the IR. But generally speaking, there are some that I know are go-tos that are going to sound pretty good. Then once I get to kind of more of the mixing process where I'm getting a lot of guitars in there, at that point, I start trying different IRs. Um, I'll show you guys what I mean uh, with this next guitar. So I realized when I was editing this video that I failed to mention that I do have to monitor through Pro Tools for this type of setup. Typically I would monitor through my Focusrite interface, which would be zero latency. But because I am running and monitoring through a plugin in Pro Tools, I do have to listen to my guitar through Pro Tools. Now, if none of that makes sense to you, then just skip ahead and you'll get back to the rest of the video. But for those of you who do understand what I'm talking about, basically I just have to make sure that I'm running my buffer um, way down so that the latency is as low as possible. Usually this isn't a problem for me and um, and it works just fine. But if you're you know recording guitar late in the game, you've got tons of plugins on, especially on your master bus, um, it can cause problems. But there are workarounds um, and ways that I've found to to work with it just fine. All right, so initially when I tracked this, I had different IRs on it. And then when I started mixing, I realized, man, the solo is just way too dark. Here's an example of that. So here you can see in Wall of Sound, I've got the Private Jack EQ, and then this right here, which is the MWW Lead EQ 2. So both of these IRs, I know from experience, um, because I made them, they're brighter. But those are typically not the IRs that I would start out with. I will solo this guitar and you can hear what it sounds like. So typically that has a nice bite to it, really helps it cut through the mix. Typically I would probably start out with something more like this. Here I'm using the blend two and the and a green back. These are kind of two of my go-tos or kind of my favorites. Here's what this sounds like. So that sounds great by itself, but I found when I got the other guitars in there that it just didn't cut through the way I needed it to. So that's why I chose the other IRs that, that we ended up with. We'll go back to those. So you can hear right away, there's a little more bite, a little more edge, and ultimately that helps it cut through the mix and cut through some of the other guitars that are there. Here's what it sounds like all together again. So an analog digital hybrid setup like this has been a huge win for me. Not only can I record guitar amps at any time of day or no matter what's going on around me, um, I don't have to worry about the noise and, and all of that. But as you can see from, from what I was just showing you in Pro Tools, it gives me a lot of flexibility to kind of tweak and change things after the fact. This allows me to work quick, 
um, when I'm having ideas, when I want to try something, I can lay it down um, and then have some different options after the fact. Now, at this point, there are lots of different hardware pieces that will allow you to do this. The Oxbox is similar. Um, there's the new Two Notes Captor X. Um, there is a Sur Reactive Load, multiple others that will allow you to run your guitar amps direct and record silently like this. The Captor has been great for me. Um, I've been really happy with it. It just works and I never have to worry about it. But whatever the case, this seems to be the future. More and more people are going to setups like this, not only because they provide flexibility, but they provide consistency um, and tweakability. Especially now with tons of great speaker IRs and cab IRs out there, um, there are millions of options. I try to limit my options because otherwise I just will try a million different sounds and not actually make music, uh, which isn't the goal, right? We want to make music and get things done. So I do try to limit myself in that regard. But, you know, when you're looking for your sound, when you're trying to find stuff that you like, there are numerous options of different IRs to use. It's really just a matter of finding the ones that suit your taste and suit what you like to hear. Well, hopefully all that stuff makes sense, guys. Let me know in the comments if you're using a similar type setup or how maybe your rig varies. I'm sure there are lots of different ways to do it. This is just kind of where I've landed and what works well for me. As always, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Until next time, I'll see you out there.